So we'll proceed to the first uh, uh, podium session, session focused on stress urine incontinence, uh, urodynamics, and surgery. So the first paper is going to be presented by Dr. Rakaneni, and, uh, entitled Urodynamics Before Stress Urine Incontinence Surgery, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sunita Rachaneni. I'm a research fellow from the University of Birmingham. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present our systematic review and also for the privilege of being the opening presenter of this conference. The question today is whether to perform urodynamics before stress incontinence surgery on a routine basis in women. I do not have any disclosures. Trying to answer that question, we looked at various guidelines from professional bodies from around the world, and we found a conflict among the advice given to the clinicians. The IUGA and the Dutch guidelines seem to recommend urodynamics before stress incontinence surgery, whereas the NICE, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence from the UK guidelines and the European Urology Association guidelines did not. In this context, a clinician survey performed in the UK showed that 89% of the clinicians subjected women to urodynamics before stress incontinence surgery. But they identified that there was a need for further research in this area and were willing to recruit patients for RCTs. With this background, we have looked further for the evidence available in this area, and we found that we found a need for a systematic review. The objective of our systematic review was to evaluate if women undergoing urodynamics before stress incontinence surgery have a different outcome compared to women undergoing office evaluation alone. We performed a systematic search and looked at all the available databases and the gray literature. We found 388 articles, out of which four satisfied our inclusion criteria. We then performed a quality and risk of bias assessment on the included studies. We found the value study and the Dutch study to be very robust in the study methods. The third study by Moroto from Spain was published as a conference abstract, and we did not have enough information to do a full quality assessment. The fourth study from the UK, the investigate study, results have not been published so far, so we could not include it in the meta-analysis. We looked at outcomes of subjective cure, objective cure, and post-operative complications. For the outcome of subjective cure, it has been defined as change in the PGI scores, either much better or very much better in all the three studies. The relative risk was found to be 1.02, uh, with very tight confidence intervals of 0 0.90 to 1.15, indicating that there was no difference between both the groups. Objective cure has been defined as negative cough stress test at the end of one year following surgery. Again, the risk ratio was found to be 1.01, .01, indicating that there was no clinically significant difference for this outcome in women undergoing either office evaluation and urodynamics compared to office evaluation alone. For the post-operative complications, we looked at de novo or worsening of ongoing urgency, and the relative risk was 0 0.80. But as you can see, the confidence intervals are wider here, making this difference statistically insignificant. Only two studies reported on voiding dysfunction. Voiding dysfunction was defined in the value study as women needing either medical or surgical treatment to empty the bladders in the presence of voiding difficulty. So the risk ratio was 1.54, but the confidence intervals are wider here, again indicating that there is no statistically diff significant difference for this outcome between both the groups.
So with this evidence, we conclude that there is no difference in the subjective or objective outcomes or post-operative complications. Even in the presence of discordant findings between office evaluation and urodynamics, uh, women who were subjected to immediate mediurethral sling compared to women who had a delay and tailored treatment based on their urodynamic diagnosis and who subsequently underwent mediurethral sling surgery had very similar outcome. So we have now three studies conducted in three different countries showing very similar results. All the three are non-inferiority RCTs in design. So with this, we conclude that urodynamics is not necessary before stress incontinence surgery in women with isolated stress incontinence or stress-predominant mixed incontinence office evaluation should now be performed in a routine basis in these women. However, in women with complicated urinary incontinence as defined by the ICS like pre-existing voiding dysfunction, complex symptoms, neuropathic symptoms, failed previous incontinence surgery will still need urodynamics. Thank you very much for listening.